Hello, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to do a user review for you to maybe help you make a purchase indecision. And I'm going to explain the Swarovski EL 10x42 binocular. It's about a mid-range binocular in Swarovski's top-of-the-line EL series. You have 8 and 10x32. 8.5 and 10 by 42 and then the large ones you have 10 by 50 and 12 by 50. They're much bigger and heavier though. They're roof prism binoculars and they're only about six inches long and these particular model weigh in at 800 grams. That's still quite heavy for a binocular of this size, and the reason for that is the very high quality optical glass inside. There's 12 elements per barrel. There are Schmidt Peckham roof prisms, which keep the dimensions small. And the bodywork and chassis are made of magnesium alloy. Every single optical grade element is extra low dispersion with fluoride in their design, which guarantees extra low dispersion, um, high refractive index, and they're also multi-coated with Swarovski's um, top-of-the-line coating, Swarajur, Swaro Bright, and Swaro Top. Also, on the objective lenses and the oculars, they have Swarrow Clean, which is a hydrophobic coating, which ensures that um, water, moisture, even things like oil, grit, dirt, doesn't stay on too easily. It can be easily cleaned off or it will just roll off the glass. They're fully coated in a rubber armour. And the great thing about these is that they've got what Swarovski call their Field Pro Pack. Now you can see that the objective lens caps, for example, are flush fitting into the objective lens surround, like this. You can even take these off and you can replace, replace these with a little clip which literally is a bit like that little plastic bit at the end, just before they extend into the caps. So really quite nice. And they flip over and they don't really take up a lot of room, as you can see. Many other types of binoculars, they have sort of like a ring that slots around the outer rim of the objective lens, but these are nice and flush, and I quite like that. Over here, you have a bayonet type strap lug and it rotates freely around that position and it's also designed so it can take other accessories and I'll show you one of them in a minute. So that's great, it keeps it out of the way of the lenses when you're moving it up to your face as you can see, you know. It just keeps it out of the way of the oculars, and that's great. And the strap here is really quite clever because it has these turnable switches which releases this. And it's like a toggle, like um, on a hoodie. And you can pull it closer to your body, or you can turn it um, and pull the binoculars away. It can all be done in a very easy to do movement and then these can then be locked back up and it will retain the position. And that is attached to a very comfortable neoprene, almost like memory foam strap. It's very comfortable to wear. In addition, you have 
some very nice flexible ocular eye caps which move as you open and close the uh, eye cups. And the eye cups have multiple positions on a kind of helical mechanism, as you can see like that. And you get 20 millimeters of eye relief. So if you wear glasses or if you don't, you're gonna be very well catered for and you will get 100% field of view. Brilliant for that. In addition, you can actually remove these from the binoculars by turning beyond, revealing the ocular eyepiece. And that's great for cleaning. So you don't get any dust particles in the corners, for example. And it goes straight back into an, an adjustable eye cup in one very simple movement. That's fantastic design, good thinking by Swarovski. The focus mechanism here is shared in position with the diopter. And you can see up here, there's like a little relief switch. And that is designed to be turned, and I forget which direction it is. There we, there we go. And it's locked in that position. But if I turn it that way, it then, releases the diopter, and you can see that it's indicated from plus five to minus five, and it's a click stop type of diopter. It remembers your position. Once you've finished, press it down, and then you can relock it. And that's great. That's quite an unusual feature on a pair of binoculars of this grade. Even the Leica's, and the Zeisses don't have something as well thought out as that mechanically. Although I have to say, if I was being honest, the Leica probably has the smoother focusing mechanism overall. It really is quite a nice mechanism on the uh, top of the line Leicas. Um, the competing binocular from Zeiss is the Zeiss Victory SF. And that has its focusing mechanism further down between the, um, the ocular end bracket and sits in the middle. And then there's another piece down here. So it's separated here and the diopter is then above this here. Some people say that that's more comfortable and intuitive for focusing. To be honest, I don't mind too much um, because there are virtues that this one has that I just couldn't um, stop thinking about buying it. So I was talking about the optical formula of these binoculars. Something else that they have is called Swarrow Vision. Now Swarrow Vision is a set of two field flattening lenses um, up at the top end of the oculars here. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. It flattens the field. And the benefit of that is that you get edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, edge-to-edge. -edge. So rather than just having a, a biased center in terms of sharpness, you truly get edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. So even if you've got um, subjects that you're looking at at the edge of the field, so for example, if you're looking at a large flock of sea seabirds or wading birds and you want to see every individual, and their detail, you've got far more chance of seeing that through a pair of Swarovski ELs than you do most other uh, makes of binocular. Absolutely fantastic for that. In addition, and I would have to say that this is probably the most important reason why I bought these, is the color accuracy of these binoculars. The color accuracy is the closest I can perceive through my own eyes that I ha I could with a pair of binoculars stuck on the end of my eyes. They really are an extension of the eyes in that regard. The colors 
sing, but they're neutral, accurate, and faithful to what you're looking at. So if you wanted to look at a colourful bird, for example, rather than being very oversaturated, and in some binocular makes that is the case, um, I would say that Leica, Leica colours are very famous, and um, they're famous because they're very rich and saturated, and it's not just in their camera glass either, it's also extended into their binoculars. It looks like the saturation is pushed a little far too much. Although I have to say it's very beautiful to see. But it, if you really are a stickler for accuracy, then choose these without a shadow of a doubt. In terms of sharpness, uh, oh, I will just quickly say um, the Zeiss Victory SFs, I know that these are very popular among birders at the moment, but I find that the Zeiss Victory SFs have a bit of a warm cast to their colour, and that just wasn't for me. At this kind of level you're talking about the subjective, I have to say they're a very fine pair of binoculars, so if you are desperate to go out and get some Victory SFs, you will not be disappointed or like an Octavid, or Ultra, Ultravid um, High HD. Um, I think they're called High HD or HD. Now, sharpness on binoculars of this grade, you're talking scalpels, sushi knives, razor blades. It really is that sharp. Light transmission is very high indeed because of the coatings, because of the high... Um, quality optical grade glass and fluoride within their ingredients. Ultra low dispersion, or, or very low dispersion, sorry, and um, uh, high refractive index. You're talking light transmission that will get you to use these with confidence and ease at dusk and dawn as well. And, and that's quite impressive. In addition, apart from that, the contrast is fantastic. And the clincher for me with these binoculars was the lack of perceivable chromatic aberrations. That is so important. Now, many, many photographers complain about that in camera glass but it's something that you can correct in Photoshop um, and other image editing software. With these, you need to be able to see clearly as soon as you put them up to your face. And there's nothing more annoying, if your eyes are trained that way, when you see green and purple fringing around distant objects with pronounced lines and especially when there's heavy backlighting and, you know, a strong directional source of light. It's really frustrating. These almost eliminate it completely. The optical formula is so impressive in these. It doesn't bother me at all. You can detect it slightly if you really look hard, but you really have to be a bit of an anorak to do that. Uh, I'm not an anorak. Um, I, I can see it when I see it, but, you know, it's so imperceivable, it, it really won't bother you. So th for that, these are fantastic. So in terms of optical quality, um, I would say that these are probably the reference binocular in their class. Very closely followed by um, Victory SF and Noctivid. I, I would say that the Victory SF are marginally nicer than the Noctivids. They are exceptionally sharp binoculars, the, the Zeiss ones, but they're a bit too big and long. Um, I didn't really like their length. They are slightly lighter, but they don't have as good eye relief as these. They have the warm cast, as I was describing, and um, apart from that, I would say that the, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't, 
Um, I like, I prefer the focus mechanics on this binocular compared to the Zeiss as well. The Zeiss are too long. Um, they're a bit longer than these binoculars. They're lighter though, and they have very innovative um, weight shifting technology. All of the weight is pushed mainly towards the ocular, away from the objective, which makes them very well balanced when they're up against the face. But we're really splitting hairs at this kind of level. These are very well balanced as well. 50-50 weight distribution throughout, I would say. So, that's the main binocular. Let's go into a couple of the other options. Now, this here is the BCP um, binocular cowl. Um, you can take the lugs out and you get some special lugs with this and in, you replace it with these and it comes over the top. I'm not going to put it on for you but you can get a general idea. And these are good for example if you do hunting, if you do um, exploring or observing for a prolonged period of time during the day. The great thing about these is, is it keeps them nice and waterproof and you can just flip them over. You can also Keep a little cloth inside here, in there, to keep them clean, or a moist wipe, or something like that, no problem. So that's a nice little accessory to have when you're constantly putting these up to your face during the day. It just makes it a little bit more convenient than taking these off all of the time. But most of the time, I'm quite happy with the eye cups. Apart from that, you get this really nice field bag, shower proof. These are quite expensive on their own, so it's a really nice quality accessory. These nice little leather zips. You get the strap as well, which is a Velcro FR. Nice and capacious. like so, nice and padded. I've got a little cleaning cloth down there and in here I've just got a few wet wipes just in case I need to use those. This is an aftermarket accessory kit and it's again in a Swarovski style um, canvas showerproof bag. This one's got a belt clip and inside lens cleaner, brush, Nice quality lint-free cloth and loads of wet wipes. Absolutely loads of them, as you can see in there. Yep. So this is a nice little kit to get and I have to say the lens cleaner is stunningly good. Okay, so it's well worth getting that if you're dropping quite a bit, let's be honest, on a pair of binoculars like this. That's a good investment. So there, there you have it. That's the Swarovski Optic 10x42 EL binoculars. My recommendation would be if you are a serious bird watcher, explorer, traveler, you enjoy going out into the countryside and observing nature, birds, any kind of wildlife, deer, and so on and so forth, these are gonna be very jolly hard to beat. If you prefer something a little bit lighter, the eight or 10 by 32 might be your bag. They're about 600 grams, whereas these are 800 grams. If you do exploring, you might go for the bigger ones, but be prepared to use a tripod. If you go over 10 magnification, excuse me, over 10 magnification, you might need a tripod. Are these worth the money? Most definitely they are. When you look through them, the view is absolutely stunning. You will go wow any time you look through them. Beautifully clear, fantastic clarity, almost makes no, makes no difference, almost zero chromatic aberrations, edge to edge sharpness, light, light that you didn't think was there at dawn and dusk, when you look through these, beautiful to use, 
Um, fantastic mechanics, great quality. I recommend a pair. Thank you.